chapter 17, problem 4. If 50 grams of hot water at 80 degrees Celsius, so 50 grams of hot water, doesn't look hot, but oh well, 80 degrees Celsius is around 180, 175 Fahrenheit, is put into a cavity in a very large block of ice at 0 degrees Celsius so the ice here, it says actually very large ice at zero degrees Celsius, so ice of course could be colder, so the zero degrees Celsius ice is at the verge of melting. What will be the final temperature of the water in the cavity? How much ice must melt in order to cool the hot water down to this temperature? Now technically we could say that if we had a limited amount of ice and we have 80 degrees Celsius water, 50 grams, and we pour it in there, well, the water, of course, is going to drop its temperature, and the ice is going to melt, for which it needs heat. That's the latent heat of fusion that it needs. Um, and then it's going to increase its temperature. But it says it's a very large amount of ice, so that leads us to a conclusion that we say, okay, the ice is actually going to stay with, a, with, with the exception of a little small, small amount that will actually melt. And all the... Um, um, liquid hot water will become as cold as possible and in fact it will become go down to zero degrees Celsius and that is the answer to the first question zero degrees Celsius of liquid water well here this one is zero degrees Celsius of solid ice the difference between the two is that we would still need heat the latent heat, the hidden heat that cannot be measured by a thermometer in order to get from zero degrees Celsius solid to zero degrees Celsius liquid or to extract that same amount of heat in order to get the liquid down to the solid. Okay, second question says how much ice must melt in order to cool the hot water down to the temperature? Well, let's see actually how much heat is being actually ex extracted from the hot water and that of course is that often used equation, specific heat capacity times mass times the change in temperature and that is the 1.00 calories per gram and Celsius degree times the 50 grams again I don't need to convert that to kilograms because the specific heat capacity is given per gram times the drop in temperature which is 80 Celsius degrees I use it at such that I say okay I divide my lower temperature be uh, from my high temperature I come up with a positive number so the amount of heat that needs to be attracted from the hot water is going to be 4000 calories because the grams divide and the Celsius divide leaving behind the calories now it says how much ice would have to melt in order to cool it down because the, the ice cannot get any warmer than zero degrees Celsius so the only way it can supply the heat is um, I'm sorry absorb the heat is actually by melting and that would be the latent heat of fusion which is given as Q equals mass times capital L well this one is 4000 calories and Oops, that's an equal times the mass uh, equals mass times the latent heat of fusion is given as 80 calories per gram and when you look at the numbers we're going to come up with mass equals 50 grams of ice has to melt that is the same amount of um, water, hot water, that's just a coincidence and the reason that happened is because as the latent heat has a number 80 that the temperature chosen that it's dropping is also 80 and that's why we come up with the same um, mass. If they had chosen another um, original temperature of 90 or 60 degrees Celsius then we would come up with a different amount of ice. Number five, a 50 gram chunk of 80 degrees Celsius iron is dropped into a cavity in a very large block of ice. So we have 50 gram chunk, approximately two ounces. I guess I need a few more nails here. Oh, 
that could be actually correct, 50 grams of 80 degrees Celsius nails, or iron actually, is dropped into a cavity in a very large block of ice at 0 degrees Celsius. How many grams of ice will melt? Uh, pretty similar calculation as the last one, so I would have to say that the iron is going to drop down to 0 degrees Celsius. Of course, here's no question the iron is solid anyway, so it's going to stay solid. Um, but the um, specific heat capacity of iron is 0 0.11 calories per gram and Celsius degree times 50 grams times the temperature difference of 80 Celsius degrees because it goes down to the zero degree Celsius to meet the ice and again it's a very large block of ice so they assume the ice is still gonna stay at zero degree Celsius um, without not ev even heating up um, a fraction of a, of a degree. Okay, multiply those three numbers, the units here cancel or, di or divide, and we come up with 440 calories, and then it says how many grams of ice will melt? Well, as I said, similar calculation as before, or virtually the same, m equals, mass equals 440 calories, divided by 80 calories per gram as the latent heat of fusion and that comes out to 5.5 grams of ice. Why the big difference compared to the last one? Even though it seems like the numbers are the same, you know, in the last one it was also 50 grams of water, but the big difference is that um, any kind of material other than water has a much lower heat capacity as evidenced by the 0.11 which is approximately a ninth that's why also just a ninth of the ice has to melt in order to get the pretty warm 170 Fahrenheit uh, 180 Fahrenheit iron down to zero so a much smaller amount of ice has to melt to do that to the iron than compared to the hot water Number six, which says calculate the height that a block of ice at zero degrees Celsius must be dropped to completely melt upon impact. Assume the air resistance and that all the energy goes into melting the ice. So as the block here drops, it starts out with some potential energy, which is then converted to kinetic energy, which is then converted to heat upon impact. And in fact, it says in the parentheses, hint, equate the joules of gravitational potential energy to the product of the mass of ice and its heat of fusion. Um, in the previous problems, it was given as 80 calories per gram. Here's the um, SI unit of 335,000 joules per kilogram. So capital L instead of 80 calories per gram, here it is 335,000 joules per kilogram actually same number just different units that's why it looks different do you see why the answer doesn't depend on mass oh yeah I guess they didn't give us the mass well let's see what happens potential energy at the top is mass times gravity acceleration due to gravity times height and the heat here is mass times latent heat of fusion and the entire ener potential energy is um, being converted to um, the heat so mass gravity height equals mass times latent heat of fusion and so the mass divides out that's why it doesn't matter if it's a kilogram or 80 pounds or two tons so here we now have pretty much the height as L divided by G or 335,000 okay maybe I shouldn't have squeezed it in that much kilograms 